Well, g'day everyone, how's it going? Coming at you from the studio today. And in this video, I wanted to take you through the final part on my RAID setup series. I did a few parts just to take you through the journey of how I back up my footage. And the system that I ended up with was the Thunder Bay 6 from Otherworld Computing. And now we're like a month in of using that. And I'm like already halfway full. I'm like six terabytes into a 12 terabyte setup. And I just want to take you through how that's been and the speeds that I'm getting out of that and my setup process. So just a short one today to finalize that series. If you are looking at a RAID, check it out above um, this side or this side. Um, I'll link it to the first two of those series and you can get a feel for how I set up the drives I used and everything to maintain the speeds that I'm getting. So my backup is threefold. I use um, the Thunder Bay 6 is my main editing RAID, so all the footage comes in and gets dumped onto that. Now, because we're using the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, which I'm shooting this on as well, that tends to give us a lot of footage. So we, you know, maybe we've got like six to seven to 800 gigabytes of footage per shoot per day. So we need an editing RAID that's fast and has a lot of storage. So that's where the Thunder Bay 6 came in. And I can then upgrade the drives from two terabyte drives to four terabyte drives you know, as we go further along, but speed is really critical for that. So I wanted to set that up in RAID 5 to have some redundancy within the RAID itself, but it just didn't work out that way. The speeds weren't fast enough. And I do talk about that in the previous two videos as well. So now i um, set up as RAID 1 and I've got a second backup um, just right here, just out of frame, uh, which is another 12 terabyte backup drive. And so backing everything up to that, and then from there, it goes up to Backblaze as well, not sponsored or anything, but I just use Backblaze for quite a number of years. And I've got a number of hard drives and things connected that then just back it up to Backblaze. So I've got my whole computer system uh, hard drive backed up to Backblaze and then a couple of other externals that I plug in and have them back up as well. So let's jump into some speed tests on the RAID setup. And yeah, I'll take you through how fast it is and how I utilize it. I've also offloaded all my other um, cache files and everything for Premiere Pro, for DaVinci Resolve, for After Effects, all those programs. I've offloaded all the caching files and the caching work to the Thunder Bay 6 because it's got the M2 drive, I think it is. So one terabyte of SSD. So I'll run you through on screen now the speeds that I'm getting from that SSD and from the RAID itself. And hopefully this is helpful to you. Maybe you're looking to upgrade your RAID system and you're thinking about what will work for you, what sort of speeds you need. I need to be around the 900 to 1000 uh, megabytes per second read write in order to uh, render and edit the 4K and 6K footage that I get from the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera and from my EOS R. The Blackmagic runs a little bit smoother, but it still needs uh, some, you know, smart caching and stuff like that. So let's jump on the screen and check it out. All right, so my speed test of choice is Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. So we're gonna jump in there and I'll open up the my systems down here. Now I've got an eight terabyte backup that's connected to my computer. I've got the 12 terabyte backup, um, and which is here, which is a mirror of the RAID, and here is the RAID. So let's test the RAID first and see what we get. So I'm gonna open that, and I'm gonna hit speed test. And we'll see now how it goes after six months of use as well. So I've got a bit more files on there and utilizing a little bit more of that drive now, so. So certainly much slower read and write speeds than when I first set this drive up. So we're about half full now and I'm getting about 550 megabytes per second uh, write speed and about 640, 630 megabytes per second read. So then the right has jumped up to around about 600. So that's that's what I was seeing consistently, about 600 and 600 uh, on read and write. But that's certainly come down a bit since I set up the RAID. Um, and I have a few more things connected to the RAID as well. So that is around about what I get from it. And this is a drive that's kind of full of stuff. So um, it's about half full now each drive. So yeah, I'd say conservatively around about 500 
and 630 megabytes per second. So now jumping onto the other drive, which is the one terabyte drive, which is now my caching drive. And this is an NVMe, an M2 slot drive. So let's test out that. So this drive as well is giving me around about a 600, over 600 megabytes per second write speed and around about a 500, uh, over 550, nearing on 600 megabytes per second read. So again, really good numbers and enough for my caching drive. Um, but in terms of it being fast or as fast as the internal drive of the Mac, uh, that I have the MacBook Pro, it's really not um, anything near that. If I go and select the backup drive, let me test the backup drive and see what sort of speeds that gives me. This is just a normally connected drive to the USB and it's a 7200 RPM 12 terabyte drive. So it gives me around about 200 to 200. So that's my usual backup drive. So that's the speeds that I'm running currently on my RAID drive. And I guess the question is, is this fast enough? Now, I don't want to cast any shade or talk down about the Thunder Bay 6 because it is a great unit for uh, almost everything. But if you are shooting a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K or RED 6K or 8K footage, then I don't think it's fast enough for an editing RAID. So in that case, it may be good for a backup system and you might store your project files for the particular project you're working on at that time on your computer system. And that will give you enough speed, you know, on your computer system because I think the hard drive is like two, you know, up to upwards of 2000 megabytes per second. So, or two gigabytes per second. So, you know, you might use your system, uh, an, an SSD system, but this setup with the drives that I have uh, the Seagate 7200 RPM drives, once it gets, you know, about halfway to capacity and beyond, it slows down. So the thing is, it really isn't fast enough. Um, I managed to get by with editing on DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro because I use a smart caching setup and I do a lot of rendering so I can work on a project, not really worry about it. I can, you know, work on it at quarter resolution and then I can render it to see it in full resolution and I'm happy to do that. I also do proxy workflows because I work with other editors remotely as well. So I use proxies a lot and in Premiere Pro that works for me. But if you're wanting to edit 6K footage and 8K footage, this system with these hard drives that I've selected is just not fast enough. And it's interesting because I spent a few thousand dollars to kind of get this system in play. And I probably should have spent another few thousand to get a 10 gigabit ethernet set up on something like a QNAP server or some kind of other direct attached storage system that was gonna work a little bit faster and a little bit more seamlessly. I'm happy with it, I'm keeping it. Uh, but I would recommend if you really need those really super fast speeds to go with something a little bit faster and something that you can put more capacity into. Say if I got 24 terabytes or if I up this to say a 48 terabyte, then I would have that extra capacity, that extra headroom to make sure it would run faster. So, and let me just say as well, a caveat here that I'm using a program called Soft Raid. And even though these numbers are a little bit lower in the read and write speed, it is actually set up to index for video production. So even though it's only reading 600 read and write, megabytes per second read and write, it actually does index better for video production. So in the way that it caches files, in the way that it shares and and reads and writes video files, it's actually faster than the theoretical speed. So I will say that as a caveat to um, you know the lower numbers that I was expecting. So it has been pretty smooth to edit on and all in all, I'm happy with it, but I just would have liked it to be a little bit faster than that. All right, guys, well, that's all from me on this video and that concludes this series on the RAID setup. Any questions at all, throw them down in the comments. If you did get something from this video or the other two in the series, make sure you hit the thumbs up and give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already because I'm consistently putting out videos now and hopefully these type of videos give you some kind of perspective on how I'm running the video production side of my business and you know dumping clips and editing footage and things like that. Keep an eye out soon for another quick tip that I'll be releasing uh, on how to stabilize footage in DaVinci Resolve. There's some really good stabilization options that I'm beginning to like more than, you know, the warp stabilize in Premiere Pro. So I'll be doing a video on that soon and a quick tip for you. Hope you're all staying safe and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.